welcome to Cornea Grand Rounds. We're going to get started because Dr. Lin and others have to leave, but this is a quarterly thematic Grand Rounds, and uh, Dr. Lin's going to talk to us about raindrop uh, inlay for presbyopia correction. All right, so this is just going to be a brief overview of this new device, um, kind of going over what the raindrop corneal inlay is, and I've got a, a surgical video of my first case. I uh, have no financial disclosures. So what is Raindrop? It's a corneal inlay for near vision that was FDA approved last June. It's placed in just the non-dominant eye under a thick LASIK flap that's created by the femtosecond laser. Um, you have to make sure that the central corneal thickness is at least 500 microns. And just like with LASIK, you do need at least um, 300 microns of a residual stromal bed below the flap. Um, the parameters, it's approved for age 41 to 65, so presbyopia age. Um, you know, before cataract. Um, it's a two millimeter diameter hydrogel inlay that's 32 microns thick. So hydrogel is the same um, material as contact lenses. So it's just a very, very, very thin mini contact lens. And the way it works is that actually, if you see the profile here, the anterior curvature is a little bit more steep than the posterior curvature. And then actually, when it's placed under a thick flap, it induces increased corneal curvature on top and that increases the depth of focus. So the inlay itself actually has no refractive power. Um, everything is just based off of changing the corneal curvature. Um, there is a loss of one line of distance vision, and it is best used in patients who have a spherical equivalent of minus a half to plus one with less than or equal to uh, three diopters, uh, sorry, three quarters of a diopter of cylinder. Um, in the original FDA study, they found that 92% of patients had uncorrected uh, near vision of 2040 or better at two years. The most common complica complication was central corneal haze in 16.6%. It resolved in 89% of patients after um, steroid, uh, topical steroid use. The explant rate was 3.7% from haze. So this, this is kind of bad. Um, and since the FDA study, um, there's been some measures to decrease the incidence of haze. Um, so haze prevention, I mean, one thing I, I guess they, that they figured out during the study was that you need a thick flap. If you have a thin flap or a th flap that um, maybe is the same thickness as what we typically do with LASIK, which is like 110 to 120 microns, you're going to have more haze. So thicker flap, deeper, less haze. Um, intraoperative application of mitomycin C is um, also highly recommended now. Um, this is off-label from uh, what was approved by the FDA. Um, we really want to limit any sort of debris in the flap, because unlike LASIK, we can't do any irrigation underneath the flap, because the raindrop inlay is right there. So um, they advocate latex-free gloves, silicone-free syringes, lint-free sponges, just we don't want any chance of any debris getting underneath the flap and cause haze. Um, and post-operatively, we actually treat very aggressively with topical steroids. Um, they, they get started on a Durazol QID uh, for a week, and then they taper it down after a month, and after the first month of Durazol, they switch over to Lotomax um, for a total of two months. And patient expectations. So it takes at least several weeks for the vision to settle. So even though this is a LASIK-like procedure, we're making a LASIK flap, it's almost like the visual results with PRK. It just takes a while for the vision to settle down. Um, they're going to start off with blur, very blurred vision for distance, um, and that'll settle in. The end result is that they may notice better near vision than their intermediate vision. Um, they will be slightly blurred at distance in that eye because they do lose one line of distance vision, but their vision with both eyes open should be unchanged. Um, should be emphasized that the long steroid taper is essential and very important to keep the eye lubricated. There's actually more dry eye reported with the raindrop than with regular LASIK because the flap is being cut deeper, more corneal nerves are being severed. Um, so here's my first case, a 57-year-old male, right eye dominant, meaning left eye will be getting the raindrop. He did have a mild nasal tridium to the limbus in the left eye. Central corneal thickness was quite thick, so if we calculate 30% of that, that's 180 micron flap. Um, at the bottom, in very fine print, we've got his refraction. He is plano in the right eye and minus a quarter plus a quarter in the left eye. And I've got a little three-minute video here. So this proceeds um, like with normal LASIK with the femtosecond laser. Uh, creating a thick flap, again, 180 microns. 
And I always put marks on the uh, flap just so we can line things up afterwards. And so far, this is proceeding exactly like regular LASIK. Um, we use this little blunt dissector to sever um, the small attachments um, that are made by the femtosecond laser. So we free everything up. And the difference here is that because it's so thick, it wants to like flap back. So I put it back, it flaps open. Flaps back. Open it up, flaps back. Open it up again, and finally I get it to stay. And then I put on the mitomycin. So this is 0.02%, and I actually put it on for 20 seconds, and I put the flap back, so I'm getting the mitomycin on the underside of the flap and on the stromal bed. That comes off, flap comes back. And then I actually rinse with 20 cc's of BSS. So lots of BSS. Um, then I put on down a Shiat style sponge that's going to keep the tears from actually getting into the stromal bed. Because once the raindrop is down, we want everything to be very dry. We don't want tears getting in there. And it's got a nice little platform that actually helps that flap stick and stay open. And we have to dry the center very, very well with a lint-free Maricel sponge. And the raindrop is delivered through a little notch um, with a Sinsky hook. And I didn't realize at the time, but the raindrop came out a little bit too dry. And so it's kind of like if you imagine a dried contact lens, it's going to stick. So it's sticking to my Sinsky hook. I can't get it off. I'm trying to, this is not a tremor. I'm actually trying to get off, get that uh, raindrop off, and it's not coming off. So I decided to get into a second instrument and see if I can pull it off. But because it's stuck, it actually ends up tearing. So the, like a third of the raindrop tears off. I don't know if you can see it right there, tearing off. That's okay, that's why we have backups. Um, so I get a new raindrop open, and this one comes out perfectly, and you can see it there. It's clear, it's thin. I center it just on the pupil, and I let it dry for 90 seconds. How can you tell the orientation? Um, you can't. <laughs> Um, I, I think, it, I mean, yeah, anyway, we'll talk about that. So once 90 seconds pass, flap gets put back. I don't irrigate. Um, dry everything, dry the gutter. The gutter is a little bigger than normal just because there's a foreign body now under the flap. Um, and then actually placed a bandage contact lens for the first day just to help with irritation from that gutter. Um, so as far as the orientation, there's not a way to tell. Um, I think it's okay if it ends up being upside down, may not work quite as well, but um, there's really no orientation marking. But it does come out right side up. Okay, so post-op day one, this is actually normal, um, very blurred vision at distance, 21, 25, he's J2 plus. Contact lens is taken out, um, he's on antibiotic and Durazol, lots of artificial tears. And post-op week one, um, better, 2070, J1, with both eyes open, he's 2015 in J1, and he's tapering down his Durazol, continuing lots of artificial tears. He's actually coming back for his month one appointment today, so I don't have that information yet. But, um, I mean, I'm, he's very happy. He was already saying that he wasn't needing any um, reading glasses, even with the fine print. He's a lawyer, so he's doing a lot of reading and very, very happy with the results so far. So... That's about it. Any questions? Yeah. When you mentioned some explantations at the beginning because of haze, do you know if they were analyzed and if there were any deposits on the thighs? Um, I, they must have, but I don't have that detail. I know I've seen talks where they've looked at, looked at it, but I don't know what the deposits ended up being. But the haze include after explantation? Yeah, so after explantation, it always haze normally. 